you waiting for me? Uh, kind of, sort of. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Um, I realized about 10 minutes ago that uh, I had a little, a little cute story of what happened in here this morning. But uh, first, I'll just introduce Kimmy, Kimmy Avery. And uh, she's a relationship expert. And uh, you see couples, right? Yeah. I work yeah. with singles and couples, and I call myself a relationship navigation specialist. Oh. Ooh, I like that. And the reason I do, D Derek, is because I work with the masculine and feminine dynamic to help yeah. them understand each other better. And we all have masculine and feminine in us. Mm -hmm. And we have it within each partnership. So learning to navigate that and dance beautifully with that is critical. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, I had a story in here this morning. You'll appreciate it. So, uh, so a couple comes in and, you know, this was a year long uh, uh, set of work that we did together. And this was, you know, kind of you know, a you know, 20 year marriage, they're on the edge mm -hmm. and they came to me, you know, ready to divorce. And, uh, you know, I, I spent two months trying to decide if it was fair to continue the work with them because they were in, you know, contempt. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they were over the edge, right? So this morning they're in here. And so they just start, they sit down together behind me here and they start talking and they're making eye contact and they're reflecting things back to each other. And it was kind of eerie because they, they were actually sounding like me. <laughs> you know, because they, because they, and they were actually, they were doing the work. And, but except it was, you know, it was really real though. It was like, it was coming from them. It sounded like me. So <clears throat> this went on for 15 minutes. So I got up and I walked out and I made coffee. And I used my loud Vitamix and blended a coffee and I came back in and like, and I just, I, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if today they remember that that happened. They, they didn't, they didn't, I don't think they noticed I left. Wow. And it, it, it was the most amazing experience of like, like they're done. <laughs> they're completely done. They, they actually know how to solve problems now. And I thought, <laughs> it, was, it was unusual. I've never just walked out without, you know, saying, Hey, I gotta, you know, I gotta walk out of here for a minute, but it's like, right. um, and, and, and when I walked back in, I was kind of thinking they were just going to check in and say, how are you? What's going on with you? You know, it was, it was hysterical. So I thought that was funny. Um, you know, that moment when you know they're done, where yeah. they are able to solve problems, they may still have some upset moments. They may, you know, everybody's going to have that relationships, I like to say are not for the faint of heart. Yeah. So we have our moments, especially if we're different and we're trying to understand each other. And like I've got a couple today, I was rushing to get here because I was working with this couple who's de are dealing with a teenager who's got some choices she's making in her life. And mm -hmm. the mother wants to control things one way and she's, and then there's a stepfather involved. And the two of them have had all kinds of challenges and that's what we've been unpacking over the last eight months or so. Mm -hmm. And they just navigated this situation with the daughter slash stepdaughter mm -hmm. beautifully. Nice. So much so that the mother's like, I'm going to let her go wherever she wants to go. And I'm like, and he's texting me going, Oh my God, this is so awesome. You know, she's really made progress instead of clinging, which is going to absolutely have a backfire. And that's all beautiful with the teenager, but the fact that they work together on that, mm -hmm. sweet. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, you, so, but you work with individuals also. Yes. Like we're saying uh, more men, more women. I, a little bit of both, probably about 50, 50. The okay. men come to me because they are drawn to a woman who understands men. And they're like, oh my God, she's not going to make me wrong for being a man. Yeah. And women, when they come to me, they know that they want something different. Yeah. They're not sure they completely trust it right away because I'm going to help them see a man not as a misbehaving woman, yeah. but as a man who has things that he can contribute to a woman's life that are really beautiful and sweet and delicious. Mm -hmm. And that she gets to have a beautiful life 
if she can learn to accept that in her man. And it's a little harder if she's already been in the relationship and she already feels that he's betrayed her over time. Yeah. It's a yeah. little bit easier if she's been, um, if she's single. Yeah. So then we can clean up what's happened before so that she can start on a new foot. Interesting. Interesting. What would, would the men be shocked at what the women bring to you? Would the women be shocked at what the men bring to you? Would they be if, shocked? If they heard the questions and the, and, and the, the things that men and women bring up that are different, would they just be like, I had no idea that was a concern. Oh, absolutely. That kind of, sh that shows up all the time. And so I do a program called the Relationship Navigation System mm -hmm. that is ongoing mentoring calls that are live. And so I have mm -hmm. a topic and then, so we'll talk about how commitment works for men and women. Mm -hmm. And it's really different. And if you don't get right, get it right. And you don't get on the same page, relationships when you're dating will fall apart or when you're married will fall apart because we're not on the same page with this. Mm -hmm. And so when I say to the ladies that when a man commits, he's all in mm -hmm. and they're like, well, I see men having affairs and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, like, you know, my dad had affairs on my mom, mm -hmm. but my father, when I talked to him about it afterward, he said, it never occurred to me that I would not take care of your mother. Oh, wow. Like, it just like, he was in, he had, he was committed to that, but I, you know, and I never really talked to my mom about this, but I know that one of the, the strategies women use to get what they need is to withhold sex and attention. Yeah. And one thing men really need is sex and attention. Yeah. And if you expect monogamy from a man, mm -hmm. then it really behooves us to figure out a way to let go of our anger, to be able to be attentive and ask for our needs and also be attentive and intimate with our partner. Mm -hmm. And I imagine mm -hmm. she probably did what 95% of women do by withholding sex and attention. And my father went and got it outside. Yeah. You know, yeah. but that did not break his commitment to my mom. She's wow. the one who broke up with him because he'd had an affair and she said, I can't deal with this anymore. But Wow. That's interesting. That, that's, that's almost something that <clears throat> you would say is done in Western Europe, except they're not in denial about it. Right. Right. The man who has his family and he also has his mistress and he would never consider uh, having the two meet and would and would take care of his family. And as long as the wife knows that he's never going to bring the mistress around, that's an accepted thing. Yeah. Well, and I think yeah. even like in California, there are people who are working with how do you have an open relationship where the, they do show up? And I always felt like if I was with a man who wanted to have that kind of relationship, that I would want to get to know the other woman. Mm -hmm. Now, my husband's a monogamous guy and we're in a monogamous relationship. Yep. But to me, I would want to know who she was and I would not want to feel excluded. Like that to me, um, you know, Marianne Williamson wrote, our deepest fear is that we are... Our deepest fear, what I'm just complaining about how, about how powerful we are. How powerful we are. But she yeah. said, but it's beyond that where fear of ostrac ostracization uh -huh, uh -huh. is worse than our power, is yeah. worse than public speaking, is worse than death, being excluded. Yeah. And I think that years ago, I had a boyfriend who'd said he, you know, he wasn't a monogamous guy. So I had to, the mental gymnastics to see how I could make that work. And it would have, for me, been, I would have to know that woman. Uh huh. I and get I it. would have to be able to walk in at any time and be welcomed. Yeah. You know, and, but that, that's not the path I've chose. I think it's, I think non monogamy is really complicated. Oh, yeah. I don't personally think it's a path that I'd like to take, <laughs> but, you know, people do. Yeah, uh, what people I think don't understand a lot of times is you add a second person, you know, that you're dating, and you 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 now have four times the problems, yeah. and then you add a third person, and it's you know sixteen times the problems. It, you know, it's it's multiplicative. Yeah, <laughs> you, well, you have more struggle. And what's so interesting about it too <laughs> is that whole man woman dynamic that I deal with. Yeah, applies when dealing when I'm dealing with 
uh, understanding how two women are interacting in relation to a man mm -hmm. or how daughters are re reacting when their father is involved with a woman who's replacing their mother. Like mm -hmm. all of these things play out. So I'm in the man woman communication area, you know? Yeah. 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 And do you agree with me that men are from Mars and, are, and women are from a different constellation? <laughs> Probably. Right? It's pretty, it's pretty different. Yeah. Right, yes. right, right. I mean, you know, I always say women uh, see men as hairy, misbehaving women who right. are in trouble for <laughs> not doing the things we would do. Yeah. Or doing things we would never do. Yeah. And we're upset. Yeah. And men typically see men, women as smaller, emotionally indulgent versions of themselves. Yeah. We're colorful. We bring the color to the world and it's a beautiful thing. But it's, you know we're different and yeah. when we make assumptions based on how like how i operate in the world if i make an assumption about my partner that he's going to be that that same way uh -huh. and then he's not mm -hmm. and then i'm upset because mm -hmm. i'm not i i can't understand why he would or wouldn't do that particular thing mm -hmm. that's not going to serve the relationship but yeah. instead if i say Oh, I'm, you know, I'm curious, what had you do that that way? Or yeah. what were you thinking with that? And then I'm open to understanding rather than spending time. I'm curious rather than furious. You know? uh, I have I a workshop it. called Voraciously <laughs> Curious. What is it called? Voraciously Curious. It's a two day workshop for uh, couples, singles and partners flying solo. And that just means that your partner would never go to a workshop, but you want to learn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One of the uh, biggest things in the, this group that I'm running, you know, there's, there's these four posts I have uh, that are basically titled, you know, this is where to place support. And this is where to post a question on support. And it's all, you know, th you know thread after thread. And there's something, I think there's 1,500 comments in, in, in all of them. Okay. And what I look for is patterns uh, so I can do writings and, and, and help women with, you know, the kind of the, the top topics that right. come up. The, there's, there's one topic that's at the top and there's not even a close second. And that topic is uh, a, a woman recognizing what the hell a man is doing. You know, recognizing... Uh, what does this mean, this thing this man just communicated with me? Yeah. And what a woman then does is she, may, you know, she takes her clothes off, she starts opening her heart, she starts bonding, she starts falling in love, and I'm helping them recognize that the man hasn't done his part to deserve or... Uh, 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 um, Oh, he, he hasn't done the right things to open the door for you to give him your heart. So the key phrase is slowing down that I tell the women and, you know, it, you know, with, you know, I've done it in 50,000 words. Yeah. So what in the world uh, can a woman do just in her head, you know, right now to go, I think this man has done this thing. I think I'm going to open myself to getting closer. Okay. So the thing being, do, do they say what that thing is? Well, the, the, no, no, I, I'm kind of asking what, what can they pay attention to, to know that he is worthy of their heart? Well, so I ask people or I ask my clients to ask questions and, okay. and the questions are making sure that you're in alignment with future vision of what okay. you want to experience okay. before you get intimate. And right. the reason for that is that if you get intimate too soon, oxytocin takes its toll. You literally are addicted to the person and then you can't make a good choice. Because you took your clothes off. Because you took your clothes That's off. That's a big part. Well, and, but, but the oxytocin, the touching even, yeah. long yeah. kissing, masturbating and thinking about that person does the same thing actually. Yeah. Okay. Right. So when you get those, hor if, if the sexual attraction is so high yeah. that you are feeling compelled to strip and get involved sexually right now because, oh, 
Mm -hmm. he's so hot or he's so hot. You've got this delicious mm, desire. <laughs> yeah. That makes great babies. Yeah. <laughs> Period. <laughs> yeah. It does not make a great relationship. <laughs> and if you're, if you really want a one night stand and some passion, amen, go for it, go for it and have a great time. Yeah. And if you want something different than that, first of all, going with somebody who's a chemistry of a 10 is a little bit of a mistake <laughs> because you, when you've got that much desire to go after someone like that, you're kind of not very attractive to that yeah. person. Yeah. You sort of mm, got to have that person. Yeah. You're craving them and all that. And the person's like, whoa, you're a little weird. Yeah. And you're like, oh, hey, I'm normal. What's wrong? Why don't you want me? Right. It's weird. So then hmm. that if you go for somebody who's maybe a five to a seven out of 10, <laughs> where yeah. you're like, you can be your best self and you can say, you know what? I really want to have a home in the mountains where I can grow food and have a beautiful little farm in my mm -hmm. future life. And you want to live on a, a boat in the middle of, in the ocean. Yeah. That seems like that's probably not a good match. Right. I right. really think you're a great guy or, and I think that maybe that's not a great match, mm -hmm. but you have <clears throat> the wherewithal to actually say that. Yeah. If there's okay. a lot of chemistry, you go, Oh, we can work that out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so if there's five things that are the reasons a woman takes her clothes off and the top one is chemistry, what actually happens is numbers two through five and six through 10 pretty much uh, uh, go out of focus. They don't even see them. And, and uh, uh, you know, the, the woman moves forward because the chemistry and the, the attraction is strong and they feel, you know, quote unquote good with yeah. this person. So I, I like the concept of, of making sure that you're on the same page. Like, do you, do you want monogamy? Do you want to have children? Do you want a serious relationship? Do you want polyamory? I, I like the concept of asking those questions, but I'm going to have to make that uh, uh, not as valid because if you ask any person, do you want a great relationship? Their answer is yes. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, so, so what actually happens is, you know, the women send me the, their text messages and they send me, Hey, the guy did this. Hey, the guy did this. And I have to explain what it means. Right. And that's okay. There is no template is kind of my point, you know, to, to understand exactly what the man says and his actions. And, you know, if he calls you on Monday to schedule a date for Saturday lunch on your first or second date, that's different from calling you Friday night at 7 p.m. for a 9 p.m. date. Right. Okay? And that's an obvious one. Right. But, but it's not so obvious to, to the people I help. Um, so it's the interpretation of what they're doing. Well, I, I think the, Absolutely. And there's a desperation that can come involved. So yeah. I, I, the man I broke up with before I got together with my husband, he had said he wanted children yeah. and I knew I wanted children. So I was tolerating him <laughs> not being a match for me, really. Yeah. And I, the right, then I said to my mom, I'm breaking up with a guy I've been seeing. It's not a match. I, you know, and she says, well, what about somebody who has children? And the ne that next day I ended up meeting Art, my mm -hmm. husband, mm -hmm. and he has children. Anyway, the point yeah. being that we can trick ourselves into staying with somebody who's not a match because it seems like something really important to us is an alignment and we ignore things that are really important to us. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, we go, we go. Blind, deaf, and dumb. The, the, the level of uh, commitment that happens when we get physical, you know, st it, it still blows my mind. And it, it, I know, you know, and I, it works a little different for men, but all of a sudden, you know, if you compare a friendship to somebody we get romantic with, all of a sudden it's like your whole worldview 
gets integrated with the other person and things that you would never think you need to do for a friend, all of a sudden, everything uh, uh, starts falling into place of what you think you need to do for this person, for this relationship. And I've been using the word overcompensation a lot. You know, what, what, I, want, what I want people to be able to do is to date, to go out, and then it's fairly obvious if, if somebody's into you, if you're on your seventh date together, you know, you're hitting it off. I want people to learn how to do lots of nothing at that point. I want them to learn to not all of a sudden help the person remodel their house because they have remodeling skills, you know, help them find a better mortgage because they know a good mortgage broker. And that's, that's the thing that we do that, that causes so much trouble. We we're, it's like we're blind, deaf and dumb because of the oxytocin. We don't actually oh, right. see the person in front of us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. being an independent woman, my whole life. Mm -hmm. When I started studying about men, I learned that men need to be needed. Right. And one of the things they look for in a life partner is somebody who can meet their critical needs. Yeah. So I shifted my mentality from, hey, you don't need me. I don't need you. We're good. We could just hang out and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. to allowing myself to need a partner yeah. and allowing him to have needs from me of me. Yeah. So I started doing things when I was dating art mm -hmm. to like, I was bringing him lunch at work. Right. Things that, you know, I might've done before. I might not have done, but I did them consciously in terms of things that would enhance his life. Yeah. And I think often, like, in college, I was given a t-shirt by my brothers that said, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we thought it was really funny. And I really suffered because of that fiercely independent streak that I thought I was supposed to have. Yeah. And the truth is, we're all interdependent. Yeah. Not you know, I, being too dependent is not yeah. okay. Being so independent that you can't have a relationship is not okay. And I see that a lot with women who are, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. And then they're desperate underneath for a relationship. So that in itself causes an aversion and, and would be partners, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, we're not in disagreement at all. Uh, uh, I understand your response to you know what I just said a moment ago. Uh, the the thing I was saying has to do more with just slowing it down and, and realizing, wow, I'm doing all this giving, giving, giving because I'm insecure and I think this is the only way the you know the man's going to love me, the woman's going to love me, and they already do. Yes. Often, and, and so so I'm just saying slow it down a little, and, and it does work. There is a big difference you you've brought up here about men and women. Uh, you know, in, in the, in the helping in, so yeah. go, go ahead. Well, okay. So yeah. slowing it down is really important yeah. and knowing. So I, I'm back in 1999, I was dating this really nice guy named Greg. And as we were breaking up, I, I had wanted to get married and have a family. I always had wanted that. And I decided that he wouldn't be able to do that Yeah, because he was a, working musician and he worked every, seven nights a week right mm -hmm. working musician not making a ton of money he wouldn't be able to buy a house all those things so we en ended up splitting up fairly amicably and um as i was packing up my things all the things that i distributed around his place that i made <laughs> it homey right yeah so I did what you're describing where i had just sort of filled in and and allowed myself to sort of be there a little probably prematurely because we weren't clear we were on the same page about the future mm -hmm. and there were things that i like conversations i think it's not so you alluded to something earlier it's an, i don't want to be doing an interview where i'm pounding my <laughs> potential partner with questions 
<laughs> yeah. But I'm like, in your perfect life, what does five years from now look like for you? Yeah. What yeah, do you, yeah. how do you want to spend the rest of your days? Yeah. Oh, and then I'm listening for, does this match with me or not? Mm -hmm. And then, but it's not, I'm not attached to his answers. Yeah. Right. And if I don't, don't have as much chemistry, I'm not as attached. If I'm, I've got a 10, <laughs> a 10, it's really like, oh, you really should think this. You really should want this. And then it's anyway, that's a whole mess. That, yeah. Um, when, uh, yeah, when, what, one thing I describe is the ideal man at, to, w w you know, I, I, I'm pointing out uncool behaviors when women bring it up and I say, well, he's not available because of this. He's not available because of this. And, I, and I'm constantly questioning myself to make sure that I'm not painting the picture of a ridiculously, you know, you know over the top perfect guy. And, and I, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty conscious of that and I don't, I, I'm getting better. I don't think I'm really doing that. Uh, but the, the question I have is, you know, so women are out there and I'm describing to them that, you know, you want to look for a man that has at least a little bit of initiative to a ask lot of initiative. A, well, a lot of initiative, but, but, but if I, if I told them all, you have to wait until the man approaches and he's strong and he, you know, yeah. You, you know, it, it, it's great if they have that, but you know, in the area I live, I hear about it happening, you know, once every four months. So, so that, that's a problem too. That's a real thing. So what do we say to women who are in a supermarket? It's actually one of the best places. Just my clients. It still meet is, yeah. 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 What does a woman do if she likes a guy that, you know, and, and her asking him out and getting a phone number is, is problematic on all these levels. Does smile. She smile. And make eye contact. Make eye contact and Be wait. Friendly. Be friendly and wait. I, you know, I've heard you should smile for five seconds. Okay. Eye contact for five seconds and keep smiling. Okay. And, Cause, and, and men will start to walk over to you. Yeah. And turn around if you stop smiling. Okay. okay. So smiling is huge. Yeah. It's a welcome sign. It means you're not going to bite their head off yeah. for asking you out mm -hmm. and being welcome. And also, I think there's a combination, too, of being ready to say, wow, that's so sweet. Thank you for asking. I'm not interested. Okay. Being able to say that with a sweetness about you rather than a fierceness. Okay. You know, because I think a lot of men are really, really gun shy around women yep. who have been fierce. Yep. And we also, as women, don't always realize how intense our eyes can be. Yeah. So even if you're not smiling with your mouth, <laughs> smile with your eyes. Yeah. Because we can be like, oh, is he interested in me? Right. And we're really scary looking. Right. So that men, men get blamed for being highly visual. And they are. <laughs> they can tell if you're angry yeah. or if you're nice. Yeah. So be nice. Be approachable. Yeah. If you want a man to approach you, be approachable. And you can also, that doesn't mean you shouldn't position yourself where you're easily approachable. Yeah. You no. Know? Oh, and, you know, you can walk over to the fruit thing. There's a guy you want to meet. Walk over to the same fruit bin and say, hey, is, um, Ask a question, be, be friendly, and then give the air that if you were, to, you know, wow, you're really sweet. If you were to ask me out, I would probably say yes. Okay. That's what I was just going to ask you, because that is, that is the line that I've given to women, and it's been, uh, uh, it's been successful. Yeah. And we, we, we got this whole other side of the equation. That's a problem with men. Men can hear that line and still be too afraid to, to go in and, and, and ask. So that's, that's a tricky one. What, uh, do you coach men on how to have courage, the courage to walk up to a woman and start talking? I do. I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the thing, okay. So ladies, you can do every <laughs> man on the planet a favor by being <laughs> kind. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean you can't have boundaries. You can yeah. absolutely have boundaries and be kind. Yeah. And 
because if a man has picked up the gumption enough to come over and approach you, give him some credit. Yeah. You know, that does not mean you have to date that person. No, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. But be nice, be kind. And um, so if a man is still not making the approach, yeah. Wow. Well, okay. So <laughs> yeah. if he's still not making the approach, there's another issue that could happen in a long-term relationship if you were to be in a relationship with that person, yeah. which is that they're too timid all the time. Yeah. And that's in part, so we're back to this chemistry of a 10 thing. If the chemistry is a 10 for the man, mm -hmm. He's going to do things or be nervous and awkward and funny too. Yeah. So everything in our culture, they want us to have shiny hair, have the perfect figure, have yeah. big muscles for men, have, you know, all these things. And that causes great procreation. Yeah. But it does not cause us to be set up to have great relationships. So yeah. if a man's going for the most beautiful woman in the world that he feels like his knees are knocking with yeah. that he can't get a word in. He can't open his mouth with Yeah, That's kind of a problem. Yeah. And it will be a problem in a relationship. I, I dated a man who I was really, really adored and I still adore him. I mean, he's a good, good person. And we had been dating for a while and we without, I mean, it's sort of a long distance thing. So we're finally, you know, in bed together. Mm -hmm. And he is so nervous. <laughs> yeah. And and he's like, I knew you wouldn't like me. He starts to say these things. And I'm like, oh, stop it. Stop it. Because <laughs> I don't think that. Like, I think you're an amazing man. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't go forward in the relationship with him because I need to be with somebody who has at least the same amount of confidence that I have. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You have to meet somebody who's an equal match in that. Yeah. I think you'll love this. I, I, I've been working with a, a 20, I think 23 year old guy who is uh, so terrified to walk up to women. Uh, I was pretty bad when I was 23, but he, you know, he's, he, he's, he's worse. And I actually got his okay to tell, tell the story. He, uh, he finally was able to do a task that I suggested that he do. And uh, uh you know, it's like anything, you know, I call it, it's flooding in psychology. I, you know, I asked him to actually do this thing. And once he does it a couple of times, I think he'll be able to do it all the time. He's not yet able to walk up to a woman and ask, and ask for her phone number, mm. but he's able to walk up to any woman now, no matter how attracted to her he is and say, I just wanted to know if you're thinking about me, what I'm thinking about me, which is that I'm not worthy to ask you out. And it broke the cycle for him. He asks it in all different ways. He walks up and he basically says, are you thinking these things about me that I think you are? I'm so like, I'm so nervous. I just I'm checking in with them, checking in. And the, the women have never heard anything like this. And, and he's, he's, he's accidentally gotten phone numbers for do, from doing this. Mm -hmm. The women are so blown away that he's it able to walk up and break this conversation open. What'd you say? He's vulnerable. Yeah. yeah, he's starting with vulnerability. It, I, it was a crapshoot, um, but it's really working for him. It's hysterical. But but he's not able yet to go up and just directly ask for the phone number. But he knows this spiel. Well, I think that's really good. I I have um, I'm doing this class for a company, a group called Dianova, and it's yeah. um, it's what is it called? Sexual ang or intimacy anxiety disorder is okay. the treatment. For I never it. heard of that. Yeah, it's it's huh. new and it's pervasive. Huh. You just think about it, and yeah. people like the guy that you're talking about. And I taught a class on NL the NLP fast phobia slash trauma and what I call the book ending process. Okay. And I told a story about a guy I worked with a number of years ago who was I, I'll say 27, who was terrified to ask a woman out. Okay. And it turns out that he'd had this, I said, are you okay for me to do some work with you? And he said, sure. And I, he'd had this trauma where somebody had been really mean to him when he was younger. And so mm -hmm. he was terrified. Mm -hmm. So I did a book ending process because our brain will keep thinking of the same thing that happened over mm -hmm. and over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. until we bookend it and mm -hmm. stop it. Mm -hmm. So 
I gave the brain, his brain information that it was over. And okay. then I had him practice tools uh, that would go better with mm -hmm. his desires of finding a mate. Okay. And I, I saw him a week after this. And I said, so how's it feeling with this, um, you know, anxiety about asking somebody out? You know, he goes, oh, um, well, I did it because I'm dating somebody now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. Cause he hadn't <laughs> dated anybody. Yeah. You know? And so sometimes, I, um, as in NLP, this particular thing is so powerful to just tell the brain that particular trauma is over. Yeah. And I would imagine most young men have had some sort of negative experience trying to ask women out. And, and in today's world, women have, a lot of fierceness about them toward men yeah so it it is creating a way, a situation where men are even more nervous about asking women out yeah or making the wrong move or or approaching somebody in any way yeah that could be seen as inappropriate yeah because of the me too movement and so forth so we've got in fact i did a panel at the New Living Expo with Carolyn Mace and Marianne Williamson and yeah. Dustin Garrick. Yeah. And the conversation was about how do you move beyond the Me Too, not, not negating it, but saying, okay, so we've got these challenges. How do we create partnership? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to uplift the conversation because we do want to love and be loved. Everybody wants that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love the concept of uh, telling your brain the trauma is over. So in, in my work with men, in my work with men, um, I have, uh, uh, I've gotten something validated that I wasn't sure was just <clears throat> my own personal issue over the years. I've gotten it validated from, from many men that the most difficult thing is not taking the risk to ask the actual rejection or or non-rejection or acceptance is uh i mean obviously acceptance is wonderful but the rejection is like five percent of the pain that can really hurt it's the not taking the risk yes it's when it's when the woman walks away and the man had you know one chance he'll probably never see her again or maybe he will uh, it's not stepping into the dis the discussion, and and that's the thing that I, you know. I can, can the process you're describing be used really specifically for that? About not stepping into the discussion. So how do you how do you, how do you resolve? So I would call that we would, use, we would use it in. Yeah. So we would do a combination. In fact, yeah. the way, do you want me to describe the bookending process? Sure. Okay. So. Um, the first piece is about neutralizing the initial trauma. Okay. okay. And it's done by playing a movie backwards. So you're literally undoing <laughs> it in your mind. And in between, every time you do it backwards, you've got a safe space. So maybe some people it's being near a redwood tree or being in your favorite meadow or being at the beach, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And so I'm layering that experience with that positive association. Okay. Then we, we do that a lot of times in the mind because your mind can't, um, <laughs> we rehearse things over and over again. Mm -hmm. So that's the first piece. So mm -hmm. you don't have to actually go talk to a hundred women. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can just do it in your mind. Okay. So we do that first piece. The second piece is un is making a new movie if especially if it was a super traumatic thing i have often done work with physical ill uh issues or like um car accidents or something so it's like a cartoon so let's <laughs> say the trauma was him going up to a woman and the woman's really nasty to him so it's a so he imagines it's like a cartoon and she goes wee, 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 and he's like i don't know it's more like a marshmallow rather than <laughs> yeah. huge. And you know, it's often the, his, the impression is that she's got this big energy and he's small. So maybe he's bigger and that whatever it is. Okay. And then the third piece is actually creating a new behavior, what you want instead, and then rehearsing that. Okay. So the rehearse, rehearsal might be 
imagining going up to a woman and having confidence. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you don't have a confidence. So think of a time when you felt confident. Yeah. You get that confidence and you try it on and in your mind, you go up to this person and you talk to them feeling that confidence. Okay, great. So this is in your mind. You're not even out on the street yet, right? Yeah. In your mind. So what else do you need? You need to know that we're all in this relationship thing together. We're all humans. We all want to love and be loved. <laughs> We've got a bigger perspective, maybe. You know, we're, yeah. we're divinely created, whatever that is. Uh -huh. so you get that sense, and it's all about love. So you go up and you go open-heartedly to this okay. person. Okay. And you try that on. And you try a number of behaviors on until you imagine the ne like you've got a bunch of them together and then you say okay so now imagine it's tomorrow night and you're at yeah. the dance party mm -hmm. you walk up to somebody and you say hello feeling these feelings yeah and so you're rehearsing that and imagine it's a week from now you're at the grocery store and you see somebody you want to say hello to and you go over and say hello and you feel confident and and open-hearted nice and imagine it's a year from now nice. and you are with your partner looking back over the year feeling those things because here's a big 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 important piece Derek is you have to have a future vision mm -hmm. if you don't have that future vision you can't get specifically where you want to go you're going to get somewhere mm -hmm. but you may not get that relationship that you want or you may not have that experience that you want if you don't rehearse it and try it on and pretend and act as if because then your brain knows where you want to go so I know why I want to get confident Mm -hmm. I want to get confident so that I can ask somebody out. Yeah. Right. I want to get confident so that I can be present when my partner is telling me about her frustrating day. Yeah. And she's really upset and she's cranky. Yeah. And I can know that it's not me and I've got my nice little shield up, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. I, I, you're giving me uh, a lot to think about uh, in terms of this exercise I've been taking uh, some men through the 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 thing that has been going on for for men is that they they if they go out on three four or five dates uh you know they come back to me and they they say you know i i, I don't want to be in this relationship anymore and they can't break it off um that, that that's a very interesting thing like how it, it's different for men the oxytocin doesn't quite work the same way yeah. but being able to say no and have boundaries and quote unquote break a woman's heart, you know, after he's known her for three weeks, uh, the the fear is enormous. So I've been taking them through this exercise, which I think I'll incorporate what you just said into the exercise. Uh, but my exercise has been out there in the world. Um, I've been stepping men into going to uh, speed dating events and doing something that's extraordinarily difficult for them. Uh, you know, at the speed dating events, uh, I actually, I mean, I, I went to one maybe 25 years ago. I, I, I'm pretty sure they work the same way. You know, you, you both kind of secret mark your secret ballot at, ballot at the end if you want to meet, and then they match you up later. They send you an email. But I've actually been having the men kind of stand up at the end of their, you know, seven minutes and shake the woman's hand and let her know right there if he wants to meet her again or if he will not be calling her again. Mm. Right there on the spot. That's very cool. And uh, what's, what's so complex is, uh, actually I'm feeling my heart break right now because I know all the stories that are going on with this. The, the men are getting better at this and they are, they are breaking the woman's heart in two. Um, I'm hearing stories of the women actually leaving. Mm. So it, it's, oh, it's a, it's a bit of a harsh exercise for the women, let me tell you. Well, so going back to the beginning or somewhere <laughs> that I said, you know, our fear is being ostracized. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the directness of that can feel really hard to a woman. Men yeah. typically are more direct in their communication. Yeah. Women hint more. Yeah. We're not direct because we don't want to be a jerk, which is what we sometimes think men are when they're really direct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, wow. It's, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I appreciate it. 
I yeah. appreciate the exercise you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And as a woman, um, having a man <laughs> say that to me when I have gotten myself dressed up to go out and I'm at an event. Yeah. So it, you know, it could be, um, thank you for your time. Yeah. I don't, th so I got, the habit I got into was, I don't think we're a match. Yeah. I wish you the best of luck. Yeah. And I, I had to develop that skill because breaking men's hearts yeah. really was hard for me saying, oh, yeah. no, I'm not interested. And yeah. I got slammed by one guy for, that I dragged along for like three months when I was like 19. Uh -huh. I wouldn't say, Andy, I'm not interested in you. I wouldn't, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I was avoiding his phone calls and we didn't have cell phones back then. Uh -huh. And like, I accidentally answered the phone and he was there and I, uh -huh. oh, it was horrible. And I was uh -huh. so mean and so nasty to, in my mind for, by having done that. Mm -hmm. He's like, why don't you just tell me you're not interested? Yeah. And so, I, for years, I didn't go out mm -hmm. and I, you know, I didn't because I didn't want to have to say no. So what I would say to those guys or what I would advise is probably saying, thank you for your time. Sure. I am. I don't think we're a match. And yeah. 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 I, I believe that. And, and the men are. <laughs> OK, so the men are being so sweet in their response that like the the bell has rung and the next person's waiting for them. Believe yeah. me, that's actually a problem of, you know, they're, they're being so sweet. That's the problem in the first place. They can't do it. Right. And, and, and then believe me, they're being gentle and sweet. And these are, I would not set, send a super strong alpha male, or, you know, to go do this exercise. These are men who right. are terrified. And uh, the, the, I mean, I'm not going to really do this, but I almost wish, you know, the men could, <laughs> could hand the women a card you know, and say, Derek will be available for question and answer after this. <laughs> event. You need him for no charge. I mean, I swear, I almost, I feel. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Um, one of the, okay, so I'm going to be putting on some dating events in um, with a gal named Carol. Yeah. And uh, in San Francisco, East Bay kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> years ago, I went to a Human Awareness Institute singles event yeah and i loved the way they did it i've been there yeah yeah and the, where they the, said the group the, the group movement here's a, there's movement there's a little yeah. piece of paper you can give yeah. the piece of paper to somebody and the person's job is to say thank you yeah and they may or may not, not call you the the at the next day or yeah. at the next day they don't have to call you mm -hmm. but at least they've given you or you've given them your interest yeah and i think that number one being more overt about interest is really nice yeah um i think they handled it really well because it's not like smarmy oh i'm in your face overt which yeah. is not helpful either on both you know both genders mm -hmm. and giving people permission to to follow up or not uh -huh. Um, I think is is really important where you don't have to feel obligated to do it. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a match for you. Yeah. If you like the directness, I would love to get to a place. And I'm writing a chapter in my book, um, which is relationship and partnership. Okay. The distinction. Relationships uh -huh. have all kinds of meanings, right? Mm -hmm. And partnership is often used as a business term. Okay. And it's clear. Mm -hmm. and their agreements and I like you, you like me. Okay. Let's have a conversation about what we would like to do with that. Ooh, yeah. I, I'm feeling attracted to you. I'd love to kiss you. Yeah. What do you think about that? You know, just like being overt instead of smarmy. <laughs> you know, I don't... That's a tricky area because you have the, the whole, you know, you know, permission based, you know, can, you know, would you like a hug or can I, you know, can I give you a hug for, you know, you know, that, you know, you have half the women saying that's the least sexy question I've ever heard. Just hug me. So I'm, I, I'm torn on, 
that. Um, you know, you know, women want a man that's you know going to take charge and touches her and does it in an it elegant, has to be the right man though, the right man, Not the right man, <laughs> then he's in trouble. So yeah, we're, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I think that it's not fair to have it both ways. Yeah. You know, I, I think yeah. that <laughs> we want to have men be respectful of us. Yeah. Asking yeah. that question is really good. Yeah. 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 I, and, it's, and it's I, actually, no, go ahead. And go ahead. I do understand that it's not exactly the sexiest thing. Yeah. But it, I would love to make it sexy. Yeah. Well, you know, an exercise, I haven't done this in a while, but a, a favorite exercise of mine is, you know, I, you know, I take a man out. Yeah. And uh, uh, we work on the approach anxiety issue. And uh, 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 sometimes we actually do the touching exercise where I actually show him. Uh, it's a very complex exercise. And there's a lot to talk about uh, with, with me and the man, like for an hour after. It's very complicated. But I actually show him how I'm able to walk through a supermarket and touch a woman's arm. Mm. I actually show him and, and he, what he observes me doing that and he observes what I'm saying and how, how I pulled it off and how I accomplished that. And boy, is there a lot to talk about, about why that was okay. Mm -hmm. You know, how I approached, which way she was looking, what I said, the exact lightness of how I touched her, where I touched her. And then a sixth, a sixth sense, which is almost unexplainable, that it was okay. Right. And that, that is what we're talking about here. The sensitivity of a man trying to figure out if he is the right guy at the right moment that she feels safe with. That's very hard to teach. It is. And it's that there's an intuitive factor with that that you're describing. Yeah. yeah. There's... Um, I would say that how you show up, if you're showing up kind of guarded and awkward, that actually feels unsafe. Yep. If you're showing up open-hearted and welcoming and friendly, that's yep. an, an entirely different scenario. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll give one thing that is part of my template on that. And most of it's not a template, but one thing is that all the man has to do is either make her laugh or say something right now about what's going on in the current environment, you know? So, you know, God, you know, these are the ban are the bananas, you know, always this overripe, you know, <laughs> you know, that's all you got to do, you know? And then the woman has something to say about it. I mean, it's, right. it's, it's very subtle. So I have a question here, um, which might take us uh, down a little bit different path. Um, okay. uh, uh, Kim is asking, uh, she'd like to hear about uh, talking to a man about having a vision for the future mm -hmm. and how important is that as a prerequisite for finding a good match versus being open and going with the flow and giving him some time to see what happens next. Okay. So, <laughs> Kim... <laughs> I did that for years. Yeah. Years. Yeah. And I, I am all about love. I yeah. fall in love easily and I love <laughs> love. I, I'm a lover. Like I love love. Yeah. And, and, and I love people and I, and I can find something good in everybody. Mm -hmm. right? And then I had to learn that I had to get really clear about what I want because what men are actually looking for is to see if they're, if we match up, that's their sign that we're a good match. And if we don't give them quality information, then they sometimes go, well, I don't know how to win with her. I don't know what she needs. So there's that. But one of the reasons we ask about his future visions and how he sees himself and that kind of thing is because if if we lead with those kinds of things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we tell them all about our dreams and our visions at mm -hmm. first, then what can happen is they'll, if, if they're really attracted to us, they'll tell us the things that we want to hear. Yep. Yeah. And I've been there more than once only to find out that they didn't want the things 
that I wanted. And I mean, it ended up really costing me my ability to have a family because I didn't meet my husband till I was 38. I started menopause at 42 and I'm 50 now. Yeah. And so uh, I had dated a guy when I was 27 and on our first date, I said, oh, I you really want to, you know, you already have children. Do you want more children? And he was older and he was 22 years older than me. Uh-huh. And he said, um, yeah, I didn't think I used to. Now I think I might. Okay. And I hung on to that. And we actually had a fantastic relationship. And then I spent time with his, his daughters and we all got along really well. Mm-hmm. And he realized that he did not want more children. Mm-hmm. He had to do the, the right thing, which was to let me go so I could meet somebody who wanted children. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if you lead with all the things that you dream about, mm-hmm. then they may fall into the trap of telling you what, they um what you want to hear yep. or or we're attracted enough to them that we keep thinking we can change them yeah they say i don't really i mean i remember dating one guy who said i said do you want children and he goes uh nah you know i guess if my wife really wants them i guess i could have that and i'm like <laughs> that's not the person i want to be the father of potential children right yeah yeah no way <laughs> you know no way does a uh, does a woman need to pay attention to uh, how much a man has meaning in his life other than her? I think so. I think yeah. that's really important. Yeah. And and in a couple ways. Yeah. Number one, you want him to have things outside of you. Yeah. I work with people on the twenty five percent rule. We should have about 25% of our needs met in the relationship. And I want my man to have interests outside because I want to have interests outside. Yeah. And then we can bring things back to the relationship. Okay. And, and the 25% seems low, but you think about your family and your friends and your hobbies and your career and the things that, you know, that are part of who you are. Yeah. And then you're looking for that overlap. And, um, If somebody doesn't have anything outside themselves, and I've seen a lot of couples as they age where Mm -hmm. he's got physical ailments, Mm -hmm. he's not, he's sort of lost touch with all his external activities and she's really the only source of his needs, getting his needs met. Okay. That is a bad place to be. I've seen that time and time again. Mm -hmm. Um. And a lot of it changes because I encourage him to do something else, but we also have to be okay as women to allow him to kind of do his thing. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's a place I go to and it goes back to, you know, one of my first self-help books in the nineties. It's, you know, Sam fire in the belly, Sam King, yeah. you, know, have you, you know, that one, mm-hmm. you know, as a, and it's, it's interesting. It's not really how a woman needs to think, but as a man, I am very clear that I need to be thinking, where am I going? And then who's coming with me? Yeah. And that, you know, that some people think that's a little cliche. Um, that, that's, that's the, if you're a believer in masculinity and femininity being real things that are tangible things that are uh, 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 you know, things to watch for, um, that's, that's how a man needs to be, you know, if, if you agree with that. Um, I had a question that I just thought of, um, have you have you ever told a couple that's struggling with their relationship uh, you're not right for each other contempt has gone too far have you ever proactively done that and uh, made them aware that they're how much denial they're in how how much of a mismatch they are I actually have and yeah. what so Couples are going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> I work on giving them information and I tell them I'm going to love them no matter what they choose. Yeah. Right. I have had couples that I was convinced would never stay together, <laughs> end up staying together. Yeah. And they work it out. They finally get over the impasse and they decide, I'm just going to let that be. Yeah. There are things that we should require about from our partner, a partnership. We, I require that five to 10 things max. Yeah. Then your needs, those are negotiable. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have our needs mixed in our requirements. Okay. And that gets kind of ugly. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. if 
sometimes the impasse is about that need being in the requirement. Mm -hmm. And then we go, you know what? I can get that need met somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then you negotiate that. And then it completely turns around. Um, so, and then there's the wants. Those are the icings on the cake. And a lot of women I've met um, have these very, very, very extensive <laughs> yeah. must-haves in their relationship. I know. <laughs> yeah. and, and nobody's going to match up to that. Yeah. So there are certain pieces that are sort of the price of admission. Yeah. And I actually have a program called the Relationship Clarity System. Okay. And it's for couples to do kind of on their own. It covers these topics, how to have a needs conversation that works. Yeah. How to make sure you're making deals around the things that are important to you. Okay. And then it comes with some coaching that goes along with it. And I have it, it's not part of the group program. Okay. Because they kind of need to figure out are they going to stay or are they going to go? Is it important to them to be together or not? They kind of need to work that out Okay. Um, with the help. And so sometimes, yeah, they're like, I mean, I've got one couple, they're Mormon. And I'm like, uh -huh. it sounds like, you know, you really are in a match. Yeah. And I have said that a couple times I, and I brought up the D word and they're like, because yeah. they're Mormon. They don't do that. Yeah. I'm like, well, okay. So you either have to figure out how to live together and figure out how to get over that. But I don't, I'm not an advocate for anybody to stay, staying together miserable. Yep. And, and actually that's the couple who we had finally turned the corner today at the beginning of, the, of this mm -hmm. call that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were working together in harmony over something. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Have you ever worked with a couple that had high, you know, distress and came to you, they worked on things. And have you ever had a couple think through how to negotiate things and reconcile without vulnerability being the, the, the thing they got to? Or is vulnerability always the thing that happens for them to recognize how much they mean to each other and they have to they have to experience the emotional reality of losing the relationship to usually get to the point of learning how to reconcile with vulnerability that's that's pretty much the center dot on exactly what i teach is it yeah does it work does it work similarly for you it does and i don't specifically lead them pat down the path to being i don't use that word a lot vulnerable yeah. Yeah. um yeah what had like uh, one example is a couple who she had felt really violated and it was a vulnerable thing. She'd left mm -hmm. the relationship. She said, I'm never going back. It's over. She was doing singles coaching with me. She tells him that he should do some singles coaching with me. Then they start understanding about the masculine and feminine. So there's a softening in their communication. Yeah. Then I get a call saying, we're going to start doing our coaching sessions together complete surprise to me yeah and um then we had an um, this forgiveness piece that we did that for all the little hurt feelings so yes they were being vulnerable yeah i wouldn't have labeled it that okay although it's of course that yeah. right so she, he was hurt for her swearing off the relationship yeah and not understanding that he was committed to the family which is why he'd made the decision okay and so we did some forgiveness around that. And then um, he was hurt or she was hurt because he had taken the family away from where they had built, had uh, her family was. So she was isolated in a new city, did forgiveness work around that. So it was piece by piece by piece by piece. Okay. And next thing I know, I get a call saying we're moving back in together. Okay. Okay, great. But it, it was absolutely vulnerable and I don't typically use that word. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Um, so if people go to your website, is that the center place to find you? And will they find everything on there about how to figure out what your groups are, what your individual sessions look like? Do they, is there a discovery call where people can get to know you? How do they, how do, how do they find you? Well, okay. So 
um, there's a discovery call. It's I call it a relation a relationship possibility call. <laughs> I love that. You, can, you can go to kimmyavery.com slash win. So okay. that's A I M I A V as in Victor, A as in Apple, R Y dot com slash win. Okay. And then um, for more information about me and about what I offer, it's at consciouscouplesnetwork.com. Okay. And that's where people can go to read articles, um, advice from Kimmy, and find out more about what I do. Okay. Are, are there any uh, uh, groups or masterminds that they can get into where they can kind of work long term with you? On Absolutely. Uh, okay. So I, I have, so the possibility session gives me the opportunity to find out really what their needs are. Okay. Do they need really de in-depth coaching with me okay. to help them to transform uh, relationship traumas and losses and heal broken experiences so that they can be present so that they can create the new relationship? Or do they just need to understand this man, woman piece? And that would be like the relationship navigation system. Okay. And that's a group mentoring program that's ongoing. Okay. Uh, heterosexuals only? Nope. nope. I, yep. I'm all about love, Derek. <laughs> I love love. I will work with homosexual couples, lesbian couples, uh, polyamorous people, okay. anybody really who wants to have a great relationship and um, is willing to be curious about the opposite sex, okay. curious about understanding the new a behavior that has perplexed you for years okay. and not make the person wrong for being who they are. So if you're open to learning a new way and you're uh -huh. tired of relationships falling apart and you want something different, then I'm your gal, kimmyavery.com slash yeah. win. Yeah. Um, I, I work with <laughs> uh, polyamorous couples where I will have sometimes the three of them in here. Mm -hmm. uh, that usually involves working individually on the phone with all three of them separately. It's rarely been four people in a poly thing, but it's been three. Will you do that? Do you do so, that too? So yeah, but most of my work's done by phone and okay. phone or Zoom. Okay. And, that, and my clients are kind of all over the world. I've got okay. some in Lebanon and South Africa and Canada. Okay. So because of that, I've got the workshop format where people can stay and do in-depth sessions with me afterward. Okay. If they want to do that or they um, would do the work through Zoom. Okay. And they okay. can do it face-to-face -face, and some people just call in. But the nice thing about doing um, meetings like this where we're face-to-face -face is we can record it so that they have, or even just on Zoom through audio, we uh -huh. can record it so they can listen back because I help my mastery and my skill set is really about unpacking the experience so that they can look at what's happening here. So here's where you were masculine and here's where you weren't allowing him to be a man. Yeah. And here's where you can bring in your femininity to really enhance the experience. And here's where you can master your own energy and clean up your own side of the street. Mm. You know, all those pieces play together and it's usually pretty complex for a relationship. Wow. All right, everybody. In my group, uh, I recommend Kimmy. Uh, and and, and I've, how, how long have we known each other? Oh, when gosh. We've known each other at least since like 2010. Okay. Since 2010. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's great having you on. And uh, I will, uh, I'll put this up. I'll put it up also publicly so you can link to it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. It's, yeah. it's such a pleasure to be here with you. I love the work that you do. I oh, think you. that, you know, we need more people out enhancing the relationship experience. Yeah, sure. we do. We do. All right. Thanks for being on, Kimmy. My pleasure. Take uh, care. Talk to you. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.